to The Reality Revolution. I am your host, Brian Scott. Recently, I read an amazing lecture from Earl Schof. And I know that name sounds unfamiliar. As I explained in that episode, I learned about Earl Schof from Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn was a fantastic mentor of Tony Robbins. In Jim Rohn's book, Seven Strategies for Wealth and Happiness, as I was reading this amazing book, there's this character he talks about who was Jim Rohn's mentor, Earl Schof. He's almost a Don Juan type of character with Carlos Castaneda. This fantastic mentor that guides Jim Rohn and offers him some amazing lessons along the way. I was saddened to see that John Earl Schof only lived 49 years living an amazing life in such a short time. So we have very little to offer from his life, but he wrote a couple books and he had some lectures that were recorded. And I read the beginning part of a lecture in that previous episode, how to properly plant your seeds. In that episode, he does an amazing job of talking about imagination and the law of attraction and using your ideas and using your thoughts, planting them as seeds. In the second part of the lecture, he has 16 lessons in how to get everything you want. And I found it to be amazing. Each of these lessons, if followed, will guide you into becoming a millionaire as Earl Schof discussed in this Millionaire Maker lecture. I would get out a pen and paper and take notes because this is amazing stuff. Lessons. Introduction. There is an infinite abundance in this universe. Not only is there an infinite abundance of happiness, faith, love, courage, joy, humility, wisdom, generosity, peace, gentleness, meekness, patience, kindness, and all such qualities one could ever desire to express habitually. But there is an infinite abundance of every material thing that one could ever desire to have in order to express his or her individuality. So the reason that so many people do not have the above in abundance is not because there is any shortage. It is simply because they are not aware of how to push the right button of appropriation. All things that one desires are available to one who understands the laws of appropriation. In other words, there is a simple set of rules by which all things are obtained, which anyone who really wants to learn them can learn and then be whatever he or she wants to be and have whatever he or she wants to have. If you will learn the ideas contained in this book and use it, I guarantee that you will realize your most cherished dreams. Lesson 1. The Count to Four Technique To be genuinely successful to me is to enjoy a large measure of happiness, health, and prosperity. It is a balanced type of life, harmonious living with good physical health and also plenty of money. So it was my privilege to start out as a poor, unhappy person and make the same observations that the millions are now making. It was my privilege to learn these basic rules and to take them out into the hard-boiled business world and to challenge every one of them and to discover beyond any shadow of a doubt that there not only is a system of rules, but that anyone, not just a few, can learn them and use them and become just as successful as they want to be. The title of this book, The Count of Four Technique, is designed to tell you that regardless of your background, your lack of education, your lack of knowing anyone who is supposed to be important, your lack of funds, or any other seeming lack, you can still be what you want to be and have what you want to have. It has been said that 98 people out of every 100 have never decided just exactly what they want to be in life. That is, they have never come to any decision regarding a life's goal, like Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, or Andrew Carnegie. Let's begin by looking at phase one, 
which is to identify what you want. Write it down. Define it. Describe it. You see your thoughts as size and color and texture. One of the reasons a person is living a small, limited type of life now is that he is in a habit of thinking small, limited thoughts. So for phase one, let's not ask the price. Of the thousands of successful people whom I have studied, every one of them had either consciously or unconsciously developed the ability to think distinctly and clearly and to define and identify the things which they wanted. The millions of people who do not have the things they want at the same time have not developed their ability to think clearly. Phase two is also just a mental exercise and it doesn't cost you one red penny. Phase two is as follows. Pretend that you already are what you want to be and that you already have what you want to have. Ask yourself, how would I feel if I were already the person I want to be? If I already had the things that I have written down on my phase one list, how would I feel? What would I do? Where would I be right now? In other words, assume the fulfilled dream. Assume the feeling of the dream fulfilled. One of the best ways that I have ever used is as follows. One, I first assume that I have already attained my desire. Two, then I ask myself what event would normally take place after I had attained my desire but would never take place other than if I had attained my desire. Three, then I make arrangements to live that event as though I had already attained my desire. Phase three is that ability within you to say yes and no. Many people have not learned that it is their individual prerogative to evaluate any life situation or event or proposition and then down deep inside say yes if they believe it should be yes and to say no if they believe it should be no. I am not advising you whether in certain circumstances you should say yes or no. But in order to emphasize this point, I would like to say that you have the power and the right and the ability if you choose to use it. And the God of heaven gave you that power, right, and ability to use it. Keep identifying your desires and keep living in the feeling of having already attained them. Yes, you can control your attention units. You can learn to say no to anything which will hinder the fulfillment of your dreams. Phase four is the how. How do you get from here and now to there and what you want to be and have what you want to have and not cost you anything? Well, I am going to give you the answer in several ways so that you will be sure to trust it. First, let me say that I am aware of certain facts, laws, rules, powers, which are all natural and which if you will do certain things with the simple faith of a child, will all work for you and bring your dreams all fulfilled to you. How many of you have ever had an idea come to you for out of the blue? All of you have. I'm absolutely sure. Well, how many of you know just where the blue is located? I don't exactly know where it is located myself, but I know the name we give it. The blue is your subconscious mind. Now, your subconscious mind is like the soil into which the farmer plants seeds. Well, phase one is the seed. Phase two is the watering, cultivating sunshine and faith. Phase three is keeping the weeds out and not letting the enemy destroy your seed, which has been well planted and is being cultivated until the harvest. Phase four is the subconscious mind, which has the same quality in the field of life as the soil for the farmer. For example, suppose that you want to enjoy the standard of living which requires an income of $1,000 per month, but right now your income is only $375 per month. Phase one, you identify your desire of an income of $1,000 per month. Phase two, you pretend and feel as you think you would feel if you already had an income of $1,000 per month. Phase three, you would insist on maintaining that feeling regardless of any suggestion which would disagree with you. Phase four, you would listen for an idea from your subconscious mind which will help you to actually earn and receive the thousand per month. One day you ask a friend of yours, how many ways are there in the world which pay at least a thousand per month income? 
The way to state the phase four principle is this. The size and color of your thoughts are cause. Your experiences are effect. Each thought has size and color, or quality and quantity. Your thought regarding income is cause. Your income is effect. If you would go through some sort of mental exercise and thereby increase the quality and quantity of your thought, which is cause, soon the income, which is effect, would be increased accordingly. The count to four technique is a mental exercise which expands our thoughts regarding our desires and the law of cause and effect brings our desires to pass. If you can count to four, you can be anything you want to be and can have anything you want to have. Lesson two, the secret of genuine success. The answer is that any individual on the face of this earth can be genuinely happy, genuinely healthy, and genuinely prosperous if he will do just one thing. Switch his focal point of attention from how much can I get out of life and develop a habitual concern about how much can I give. In other words, any individual on the face of the earth can be happy, healthy, and prosperous if they will seek an opportunity to serve where there is an unlimited opportunity to serve humanity. The first compensation to one who has dedicated himself to this secret of success of rendering a great service to humanity is livingness. Of course, the great universal law of compensation proves to us that we are compensated in the coin of the realm according to the quality and the quantity of service rendered. And I would like to say that this law of success is not a theory. The secret of genuine success is very simple. All you have to do is to find a great channel of service to humanity. I would like to suggest most strongly that when each of you realize that when you see limitations in your own individual lives and limitations in the lives of others, it is not because there is no adequate supply to fill your needs. It is because you are unable to understand the method of appropriating this infinite supply. List all the things that you want to have beautiful home, beautiful automobile, clothes, and all the things that you want to be, then read it over constantly. Change it as your desires change, and you will see marvelous changes happen almost immediately in your life. I challenge you to learn the secret of success, to find a great channel of service to humanity, and then render it in a quality and quantity, and you can be anything you want to be. You can have anything you want to have. Lesson three, awareness is power. The first rule that I would like to share with you is this. We must become aware of the fact that we are thinking beings. Rule number two is to be aware that you can only think one thought at a time. Rule number three is that we must be keenly aware, not only of the fact that we can think only one thought at a time, but that we can control all of our thought processes. The only way we can establish this new habit pattern is through control of our thinking, the use of our willpower. Through willpower, we clamp our new thoughts, our new concepts, our new objectives, our new desires, even though they are in conflict with the old habits, with the willpower, and hold them in place until we have the new habit established so strongly that it neutralizes the old habit. Rule number four. I would like for you to realize that what we are at this time is the result of everything we have thought throughout our entire past. If I might quote the great Solomon of old, who said that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Note this, what Solomon said about a man being what he thinks in his heart is not true because Solomon said it. Solomon said it because it is true. It means something to us today, not because someone said it many years ago, but because it's true. Another great teacher of old said that ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. We know that we can seek the truth about ourselves and through the control of our thought processes chart our future. Also, we should be keenly aware of the fact that whatever we want to be, whatever we want to have, we can be all of the wonderful things we want to be and we can have all of the wonderful things we want to have by realizing that we are thinking beings, that we can think only one thought at a time, 
that we can control this thought process by directing our willpower towards that which we want to be until it becomes a habit that we are what we are today because of all the thoughts which we have thought throughout all of the past I challenge you to think largely and to make large plans because they have magic to stir man's blood. Lesson 4. Choosing Your Goal Our conscious mind has the ability of reason either A-type or B-type. A-type means that we have the ability to investigate any matter, remark or situation before we will accept it as true. B-type means that we have within us the ability to accept it as true on the assumption that it is true without having investigated it. Now, due to the nature of the functions of the two major phases of the mind, 98% of the people do not understand the way the mind works. They are the victims of every suggestion which comes their way. In the thought realm, the idea concept is the father, the subconscious is the mother, and the result is the son. It is my desire to make it quite clear that anyone, regardless of who he or she may be, regardless of their station in life at the present time, can discover their goal in life, and by directing their attention to it, can obtain it and live a very happy, healthy, and prosperous life. It has been said that 98 people out of every 100 do not have a goal or main purpose in life. That is not true. Every person has a goal or a major purpose in life. Every person was especially designed to serve or express life in some particular channel well. 98 have not discovered their channel as yet. The Bible tells us to ask, and it shall be given unto us. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. If you have a quiet time, early during the day, you can use your willpower to neutralize your negative mood and dynamically outline a positive pattern on the spot for the rest of the day. 1. So first of all, we define our goals. 2. Then we must develop a strong feeling or a white heat desire for our objectives. 3. The subconscious responds to our desires to the degree of our feeling impressed upon it. Many people do the following. 1. They assume that they already have attained their objective and then plan to dramatize an event which could only take place if they have already attained their goal. Two, then they play this little drama and the subconscious is impressed because it is implied that they have already reached their goal. Your real and genuine desires will come forth and you will be one of the 2% instead of one of the 98% who do not know what they want to be or what they want to have. Let me challenge you to know that we live in an inexhaustible abundance in this universe. There is no limit to what you can be or have except your ability to dream and believe in your dream. Lesson 5. Self-Confidence I would like to introduce a wonderful word to you, which will mean a great deal to your happiness. The word is consciousness. It means the sum total of all your beliefs. Add up every thought or idea which you have ever accepted as true and that adds up to your state of beingness or consciousness. If you have accepted thoughts in the past which are not true regarding who you are and what your relationship to other people is, then you have a consciousness of inferiority. You have that consciousness because you have accepted certain untrue things as though they were true. Fill our minds with the thoughts of who you really are and how important you are. The purpose of life is to live. To live is to express. To express is to be what you want to be, and to do what you want to do and to have what you want to have. There is an abundance of everything you could desire in the universe. There are laws or rules of making available all things you desire. So all you need to do is learn the laws and decide what you desire, and then do something about it. It is your privilege to either say to yourself, I don't believe all this, or to say I am open-minded and will assume that it is true until I prove it either true or untrue in as much as it is good. If it proves untrue, fine, at least I exposed myself to the possibility of discovering that it was true. If it proves to be true, then I will always know how you feel happy, healthy, and prosperous. The first thing one must do is 
to be able to think it in the form of an idea. And the idea is the seed which falls into the soil, which is the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind then tells us from day to day what form of action is required in order to bring about the fulfillment of our dreams. We will receive this daily instruction in the form of urges and feelings. Our part is to respond with confidence and do whatever we are led to do. Sometimes it takes years to realize our dream, and sometimes it takes almost no time at all. To gain self-confidence, may I suggest some things for you to do. Read this each night before going to sleep for 50 nights. Or listen. Attend as many lectures as you can on positive thinking. Obtain a recording on self-confidence and play it over and over as often as possible to yourself. Cultivate friends who have self-confidence. Associate as much as possible with people who have lots of confidence. Expose yourself to every possible source of information regarding the study of your mental processes. Lesson 6. Money. What it is and how to have plenty of it. We have said that money is a symbol and is not the real thing. We have said that money is the medium of exchange of something real. Money also is an expression of the real thing. Money makes it possible for us to express ourselves in life. Money makes it possible for us to do the things that bring happiness. Money makes it possible for us to have the things which are desirable. Money also is a container. Money is a warehouse or a storage unit which makes it possible for us to render the real thing that which money is the symbol of in abundance. It makes it possible for us to render a service and money is a container into which we store units of service. You can see how money is not the real thing, but a medium or a symbol of the real thing, which is a service. In other words, money is in effect not a cause. Money isn't service. Money is the symbol of service. We must be able to render a quality and quantity of service. Otherwise, we are not entitled to an abundance of the results of service. The thing to do is to get a definitized concept of this basic premise that the real thing in life is not money, but rendering a quality and a quantity of service to humanity. Then habituate this concept by clamping it into place with our willpower. So may I suggest that you get a notebook and write down everything you want to be. You may think you want to be something that is going to take you years to accomplish. That is perfectly all right. Write it down. You may want something that only takes a few days to accomplish. Write it down. Then after you have written down everything that you want to be, on the other side, write down everything you want to have. List every category, your living quarters, your furnishings, your clothing, your transportation, the recreational facilities like clubs, etc. Several times each day, give some attention to this list, especially just before you turn out the light and go to sleep. Now let us briefly review. Money is a symbol, not the real thing. Money is a medium of exchange, which is the great convenience in our modern society. By the way, we should never feel negatively toward money. Money is good. Money is an expression, or money is that which makes it possible for us to express the type of life which we want to express. Money makes it possible for us to enjoy life by providing a means of exchanging our services for the services of others. When we are in and accumulate enough money which is the symbol of service rendered we can enjoy all the finer things we desire money is a container a warehouse a storage unit through which we can render more service in any given space of time than we need for our own expression we can accumulate this service in the form of money which is a container into which we can pour this additional service and use it at a later date money is an effect not a cause and so we do not put real value in money we rather trust in our happiness and our security based upon our awareness of the real thing, which is cause, our ability to render a genuine honest service to humanity. The great challenge is for us to learn how to render a real service to humanity. There are many unlimited opportunities to serve for every individual. Let us realize that we have been given not only the privilege, but the capacity to discover a great opportunity to serve humanity. Then let us burn all our bridges and get into that particular channel for which we have been especially designed and let us become experts in that field so we can dedicate ourselves to rendering a quality and quantity of service. We will be compensated in peace of mind and livingness, which is a continuous joy. 
That will be our first and most valuable compensation, but we will also be compensated in the form of financial remuneration in proportion to the quality and quantity of the service we have rendered. Lesson 7. How to Make Success Automatic Basically, success is founded upon the type of thoughts which we permit ourselves to entertain from moment to moment. These thoughts are controlled by the habit pattern. Once this pattern is, is established and our thoughts become automatic, processes based upon these patterns which we have developed because of our own desires, it is possible for us to establish sufficient success patterns in the subconscious mind so that we automatically think the proper thoughts that will make us say the right thing, do the right thing, and will make us automatically successful. This great law, which I would like to refer to as the law of cosmic habit force, or the law of habit, creates the whole universe. Every phase of expression in the entire universe operates according to this law of habit. Every phase of intelligence in the universe operates on the premise of the law of cosmic habit force. This means that once a pattern is formed and is repeated enough times for it to become well established, it will automatically operate in that orbit of expression unless it is consciously changed by a new decision upon it by the individual himself. Let me review very briefly. Decide exactly what you want to be and decide exactly the things you want to have. Definitize them by writing them down and go over them hundreds of times in your thought processes. Think about the things you want to be and the things you want to have until habit patterns are established in the subconscious in the form of tracks upon which the thoughts can function. Then, when you feel natural in this new concept of what you want to be and what you want to have, it is yours. Lesson 8. How to Obtain the Missing Ingredients Necessary for Your Success I have good news for all of these wonderful people who have deserved to be successful, yet feel that there are ingredients missing from the picture which cause them to fail to reach their objectives. There is a principle which makes it possible for them to obtain all the missing ingredients regardless of what they may be. I call this principle the Mastermind Principle. The Mastermind Principle is a friendly alliance of two or more people working together toward a common objective. Employment of this principle makes it possible for a person to enjoy the benefits of the background, the education, the energy, and the influence of other people as though all these qualities were his very own. This mastermind principle can be appropriated to help you solve any of your personal problems regardless of their nature. Realize that there are experts in every field who will be happy to help you, provided you will ask them and then compensate them. You can compensate them either from the standpoint of your appreciation or from a standpoint of remuneration or something else that would be satisfactory and motivating to them. Lesson 9. The Power Which Makes All Desires Obtainable There's only one power in the entire universe, but there are many applications and expressions of this one power. One of the most important expressions of this one power is what we ordinarily refer to as willpower. Through the proper understanding of willpower, one can obtain the fulfillment of any desire whatsoever. Let me emphasize the simple fact. Everyone has a willpower. Everyone has a conscious mind. Through the conscious and subconscious mind, we are able to design, according to our own specifications, the kind of life we want to live and the type of things we want to have. Through the willpower, we direct it so it expresses itself in regard to our dreams until... It becomes a habit pattern. So we automatically think in terms of our dreams fulfilled. Lesson 10. The power of your imagination. Through the proper use of the imagination, any person on the face of the earth can immediately assume that he is the person he would like to be. He can also assume that he has what he would like to have. But we must dare to imagine these things. In other words, if you want to be truly successful, you must say constantly to yourself, I am truly successful, not I am going to be truly successful. Because when you say you are going to be truly successful, you are confessing that you were not truly successful. Then, 
The subconscious picks up the inference that you are not successful and brings that type of harvest into your life. But dare to believe this principle and start saying to yourself that you are successful. Say to yourself, I am successful. I am happy. I am prosperous. I am poised. I am very healthy. I am a person of wisdom. I am a person of peace and happiness and joy and gentleness and faith and meekness. I am a person of enthusiasm and conviction. Put everything you want to be in the form of the present and start making statements to yourself and the attitude of ability and prayer. That is the way the subconscious will receive it and will bring it to pass in due season when you do not lose your faith. Lesson 11. How to Obtain an Increase in Income A few people in the world have developed the habit of rendering more service than what is expected of them. They appropriate the law of increasing returns. They sow generously, therefore they reap generously, making the extra mile principle part of one's habitual expression for all humanity leads to the development of a positive attitude and habitually rendering more service than that which is usually expected tends to change our basic habit patterns from a negative to a positive and of course one of the most desirable traits in the world is a positive mental attitude in other words it creates a continuous challenge to find new ways of rendering a service because it switches one's focal point of attention from the I consciousness to the you consciousness. It develops the important factor of personal initiative without which no one may obtain any positive above mediocrity, without which no one may acquire economic freedom. It develops definiteness of purpose without which no one can hope for success. One must render as much as he is being paid for in order to hold his job or to maintain his source of income whatever it may be. One has the privilege of always rendering and over plus as a means of accumulating a reserve credit of goodwill, as a means of gaining higher pay and a better position. If no such over plus is rendered, one has not a single argument in his favor by asking for a better position or increased pay. Think this over for yourself and you will have the real answer to why it pays to render more service and better service than you are being paid for. Actually, the employer is not the one who pays your salary, you are. You pay your own salary. It doesn't cost your employer a penny to pay your salary, provided he is paying you what you're worth. So the only honest way that any employee can ask for a raise is after he has gone the second mile in quality and quantity of service, to the point where he is literally earning and producing more than his present income would indicate. Lesson 12. The power of your emotions. The challenge is for each one of us to become aware of the power of our emotions and the fact that we can control our emotions, that we can experience only the desirable type of feelings, and that when we impress the subconscious with desirable feelings, we can have only desirable experiences. All we have to do is define the type of situation we would like to experience and then begin immediately to plant that kind of seed with feeling and emotion into our subconscious mind and make these impressions which will, according to the law, as tangible as gravity, electricity, or chemistry, develop into an experience. If we desire to experience these desirable things as a matter of habit, we must entertain these thoughts until they become well established, and then the law of habit will come into play, and from that point on we will experience them without any conscious effort. Did you ever wonder why some salespeople can say the same words, make the same approach, give the same presentation, give the same clothes, word for word, as another salesman and the prospect fails to react, while another person can come along and give the same approach, the same presentation, that same clothes, and make many sales. The difference is in the depth of emotion, feeling, and conviction. It is a great challenge for each person to learn to feel strongly about something. Unless one makes a decision and says within himself, this I believe, with all my being, he cannot express life effectively. Each person not only must find something that is good, true and beautiful, but which expresses itself with the depth of conviction. Each person must take inventory of all his present habit patterns and gradually as they come up and try to express himself to neutralize them if they are negative and replace them with a positive track or habit pattern. One day all the negative patterns will be eliminated or neutralized 
and all of his being will come from habit patterns which are positive and manifested in terms of the good, the true, and the beautiful. Then every thought which comes from one's being will come with sincerity and with a depth of feeling. This great indescribable emotional power will express itself effectively, and one's life will become a beautiful thing, a happy thing, a desirable thing. Lesson 13. How to get started on your dream. All anyone has to do to enjoy a large measure of happiness, health, and prosperity is to find a great human need, to find the answer to filling that need, burn all of his bridges behind him, and learn to take the answer to that need through a channel of service in quality and quantity. One must become aware that he is a thinking being. Next, it is important that one become keenly aware that he can control the one thought which he thinks at a time through willpower. Next, it is important that he become keenly aware that he is, that everyone is, what they are, because of the quality and quantity of their past thoughts and experiences. It is important for us to choose our objectives or our goals. In order for one to be happy, healthy, and prosperous, one must have an objective. It is important that one develop self-confidence. Everyone is especially and exclusively designed to do something well and possibly better than anyone else. Therefore, due to the fact that no two individuals are like or are designed for the same purpose, there is no intelligent basis for comparison of one individual with another. Realize that you are important. Realize that you are designed especially to do a great service to humanity and that you are different. Realize that you are exclusive. Realize that you have your own individuality. Become keenly aware of your individuality and your great purpose and then dedicate yourself to fulfilling that great purpose and you will develop self-confidence. In order to get started on our dream, we need to know the proper concept of money, which is the medium of exchange used in our economic world today. There is a great law in this universe, the law of habit. There is a way for every individual to obtain the missing ingredients he needs in order to reach his dream or objective. I refer to the mastermind principle. Consider too the willpower which every individual possesses. Another very important factor in getting started on your dream and having the dream fulfilled is to become thoroughly acquainted with the marvelous imagination which every individual possesses. The habit of going the second mile is one of the most important principles of success. It is vitally important that one learn the power of emotion or the power of feeling, because when the conscious mind uses the imagination and definitizes an idea, that idea must be felt. Another important factor in attaining health, happiness, and success is constantly having peace of mind. First, take inventory of your present situation and relative to the size and quality of your thinking. May I suggest that you obtain a notebook and write down an inventory of your present situation, fourth dimensionally and third dimensionally. You may wonder how to take inventory fourth dimensionally. Write down in your notebook your concept of how much poise, how much charm, how much kindness, how much love, how much faith, how much gentleness, how much patience, how many good qualities which are desirable and how many bad qualities which are undesirable you possess as a matter of habitual experience at the present time. That will be your fourth dimensional inventory. Now write down your third dimensional inventory. Your third dimensional inventory includes the type of house you live in, the type of car you drive, the type of clothes you wear, the type of income you habitually receive. Everything you have in your physical environment is in your third dimensional inventory. Then turn the page in your notebook and write down what you would like to be fourth dimensionally. How lovely you'd like to be how charming you'd like to be, how much confidence, how much faith, how much patience, how much love, how much joy, how much peace, how much gentleness, how much kindness you would like to experience habitually. Then take inventory of the type of person you would like to be from the standpoint of the third dimension. What kind of house would you like to live in? What kind of car would you like to really drive? What kind of clothes would you like to wear? What kind of neighborhood would you like to live in? What kind of a country club would you like to join? What kind of friends would you like to socialize with? How much money would you like to have as a stable basic income? Number three, have a little talk with yourself. You are constantly carrying on a conversation with yourself within yourself. As soon as you learn to feel natural in your dream fulfilled, thinking from the position 
that you already are what you want to be and that you already have what you want to have. You will find that you have attained this new level of experience and you'll be casually living in your dream fulfilled. The way to get started on your dreams now is to definitize them now. When you've attained the new level of your present dream fulfilled, you'll be able to see further over the horizon of life and will be in a position to design a new dream of being and having. Lesson 14, the four greatest values in life. To me, there are four values in life which stand out above all others. They are as follows, integrity, faith, courage, and humility. Integrity is a law just like electricity, gravity, mathematics, and chemistry. Integrity, when you thoroughly understand its nature, is something that one would not violate any more than one would violate the laws of electricity if one knew the consequences of such violation. In order to protect the individual from the uncomfortable consequences of violating the basic law of integrity, it is necessary that we approach this matter of integrity from a standpoint of morality. In other words, we must lay down certain rules and we must say that it is good if we observe the rules and it is evil to violate the rules. Next to integrity, I believe that faith is the highest value in life. In other words, our mind expresses through the instruments of our thoughts and our thoughts are contained in our words, which have size and color, design and texture. For when we say, according to our faith, it is done unto us, we are saying, according to our inner perception and according to the size and color of our ideas relative to the infinite, it is done unto us. So faith is also a tangible law and not something that we just profess to blindly. The next great value to me is courage. Courage is a function of mind that expresses itself in terms of intensity of attitude, our ability to stand up and face life without fear. It really is a quality that is based upon our understanding because our courage would depend upon our understanding and according to our understanding, we will be able to react to life positively or with courage. The next quality to me is the great quality of humility. Humility is that quality that comes from knowing who we are in relationship to ourselves and our fellow man and in relationship to the creator of the universe and all of life. Yes, humility is knowing the truth about our relationship to life, giving credit where credit is due. It is not the Pollyanna sissy type of attitude or the act that many people put on and call humility. It is a tenacious, stable type of thinking that comes from a habit pattern based on the understanding of life. And so integrity is the greatest quality in the universe, and it is a scientific thing. To know the truth is to have integrity. When you understand integrity, you would rather give someone $10 than to beat them out of a dollar. You know that the law will bring you happiness, health, and abundance if you practice integrity. Faith is that size and color of one's convictions and inner understanding the amount and the quality that one is able to express proportionate to one's individuality. Courage is that quality which makes it possible for us to learn new things and face the things we fear in order that we might continue to grow in our understanding of life. Humility is understanding our true relationship to life and not to feel that we can do anything of ourselves, but we can do all things through the great powers with which we are one. Lesson 15 how to get a feeling. It has been said by lettered men for centuries and that to have a feeling of happiness is to be happy and to have a feeling of abundance is to have an abundance and to have a feeling of health is to be healthy. Now, I would like to introduce what I call the law of reversibility, which is a law in this universe, the same as any other law, like electricity. The law of reversibility could be illustrated as follows. If you start with a dynamo and crank on a wheel, you can turn the crank and the wheel and turn the dynamo, which we will refer to as physical action. We can start with physical action and by using physical action, we can turn the dynamo physically and we can create electricity. On the other hand, we can reverse this process. We can start with electricity and with electricity, we can turn a wheel or a physical action. In other words, we can reverse the process. We can start with physical action action to create electricity or we can start with electricity and create physical action. I'm sure that everybody can understand that. Now let's apply it in a higher level of values. 
We can start with physical action and create a feeling, and then in turn feeling will create a physical action. If you can act like a king, if you can feel like a king, if you can be a king, if you can act like you are rich, you can feel like you are rich, and if you can feel like you are rich, you can be rich. If you can act like you're healthy, and you can feel like you are healthy, and if you can feel like you're healthy, you can be healthy. How do you get a feeling? You get a feeling by going through the physical exercises that you would go through if you were already the type of person you want to be. It is the number two portion of the if you can count to four formula. The number two portion is pretend that you already are the person you want to be. Pretend that you already have what you want to have. So you can literally be anything you want to be and you can have anything you want to have if you will first of all identify it. One. Define it, then play the game. Two, until it becomes a strong feeling in the conscious and then express this concept with strong feeling on the subconscious and then it must become an experience in your life. Lesson 16. The power of the law of repetition. Each time we control our attention and express our word along a certain line, repeating over and over and over again and again, a certain concept or a certain idea we're making a track in the subconscious. We are building what we call in practical psychology a conditioned consciousness. We are building a habitual feeling or a condition from which we express a habitual feeling in the subconscious. And it has been proved that when we go through this process, through repeating and s repeating and repeating over and over again, a concept that it will become established in the subconscious as a condition from which we will react with feeling habitually and then that is known as a part of us. And as Solomon said, as a man thinketh, so is he. Now through this law of repetition, we can deal with the area of cause, which is the father principle as we describe in another chapter. A well-defined idea in the conscious mind is the father principle. A well-defined idea is planted in the subconscious or the female portion of the mind. And then the son or the dream fulfilled is a result or the offspring. So we're getting down to the basic causes when we are dealing with well-defined ideas and concepts which we control through the imagination. You not only want to record knowledge on the subconscious, you want to record wisdom after you have it so that you can memorize it. Then keep on saying it until it has meaning. By repeating it and studying it over and over, it has meaning and when you get the meaning and then how to apply the meaning, that is wisdom. And this concludes the 16 lessons in how to get everything you want by Earl Shove. Really, we don't have very much more from Earl Shove other than this material, but I love it because it sounds so much like Neville Goddard. We have read many different New Thought authors, and they all have little things that are similar to Neville Goddard, but he's using whole phrases and even seemingly paragraphs that are similar, talking about imagination and the wish fulfilled or the dream fulfilled, as he calls it. I really enjoy the way that he teaches these lessons on how to get everything that you want. So to review once again, we begin with the understanding that there is an infinite abundance in this universe and he introduces in the first lesson the count to four technique. So in phase one, you identify what you want, you write it down, you define it, you describe it. And then in phase two, you pretend that you are already are what you want to be and that you already have what you want to have. You assume the feeling of the dream fulfilled. And in phase three, that ability within you, you say yes or no to. So you control your attention and you learn to say no to anything which will hinder the fulfillment of your dream. And the fourth phase is the how. How do you get from here and now to there and what you want to be and have what you want? And that's through your subconscious mind. So phase one is the seed. Phase two is the watering and the cultivating and the sunshine and the faith. Phase three is you know, you get rid of the weeds that come in, the bad thoughts, you weed everything out. And phase four is the subconscious mind, which has the same quality as the life, has as the soil for the farmer. So you identify your desire, you pretend and feel as if you already have it. You in, 
Insist on maintaining that feeling regardless of any suggestions that come to you. Anything that comes to you, you then ignore it. And then the fourth is you listen for ideas in your subconscious mind as to how to do it. You can apply this to anything. The second lesson is the secret of genuine success is service, emphasizing that service is the key to any kind of success you want to have in your life. The third lesson is awareness is power, giving three rules to this. The first is that we must become aware of the fact that we are thinking beings. The second rule is to be aware that you can only think one thought at a time. And the third is we must be keenly aware of the fact that we can think only one thought at a time, but we can control our thought. Now, I don't necessarily agree with that. Some people have the ability to think more than one thought. I've come close, but it's a good rule to focus on one thought at a time and weed out those negative thoughts. And the fourth rule is for you to realize that what we are at this time is the result of everything we thought in the past. The fourth lesson is choosing your goal. And he explains the different ways to do that. The fifth is you can have self-confidence and he has suggestions to develop your self-confidence. The sixth lesson is what money is. He defines money and defining it as a symbol of service. The seventh lesson is how to make success automatic. And this is a pattern that is established when our thoughts become automatic. And here he introduces the law of cosmic habit force, which is a book that Mitch Horowitz wrote. And I haven't read that book. And I'm wondering if he refers to Earl Schof in that book. That's something I might have heard from Napoleon Hill, but the law of cosmic habit force is mentioned here. The eighth lesson is how to obtain missing ingredients necessary for success. And he recommends using the mastermind. The ninth lesson is the power which makes all desires obtainable emphasizing there is only one power and the ways the subconscious and conscious mind are able to specify and use this power. The 10th lesson is the power of the imagination, emphasizing that we imagine that we have what we want in the present moment. I am emphasizing the I am successful or I am happy. The 11th lesson is how to obtain an increase in income. And that is by giving more service than what is expected and that leads to the law of increasing returns. The 12th lesson is the power of your emotion. And that is the challenge for each of us to become aware of the power of our emotions and the fact that we can control our emotions. We can experience only the desirable type of feelings. And when we impress the subconscious with desirable feelings, we can have only desirable experiences. Essentially, the feeling is the secret. The 13th lesson is how to get started on your dream. And in this, he emphasizes that you realize that you're important. You realize that you're designed specifically to do great service. You realize that you are exclusive. And in order to get started on your dream, you need to know the proper concept of money. He emphasizes the great law of habit in this particular lesson. And creating a habit is a way to start on your dream. He then recommends taking inventory of your present situation creating a fourth dimensional inventory as well as a third dimensional inventory and take inventory of the type of person you would like to be and having little talks with yourself on a way to get started on your dreams. Shof like Jim Rohn continually recommends using a notebook and writing stuff down. The 14th lesson, the four great values of life, which are integrity, faith, courage, and humility. The 15th lesson is how to get a feeling. And here he talks about not just that the feeling is the secret, but how to create that feeling. And here he emphasizes, unlike other teachers, the physical element of creating a feeling. And that is doing the physical thing. So if you want to be rich, you act rich physically. You put it into your body. You physically walk around like you're rich. You want to act like a king, then you become a king. And the final lesson is the law of repetition. That when you think on a repeated basis, repeatedly, that it brings success to you. And these 16 lessons are how to get everything that you want out of life. You've heard these things before. 
I've read them to you before from other authors. It's just a beautifully succinct teaching within one hour what some authors take hundreds and hundreds of pages to explain. It's simple, it's succinct, and it really felt like a lot of different huge New Thought authors were coming through Earl Shove. It's unfortunate that his laws that he applied didn't allow him to live a longer life so we could get more books from him, but it is wonderful to read his words in this particular case. And before yesterday, I had no idea who he was, so I'm excited to discover him and share my discovery with you. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to The Reality Revolution. Mm-hmm.